Yeah, so we got um we got, we did have fireworks shot at us though. So, oh yeah. On Saturday, yeah. My parents got like the big boy fireworks, and we were doing them from like the top of a little shed that like has our like water pump and all that stuff like that because we have well water, and uh, it fell over. And so, like, the first uh-huh. one c- kind of went over to one side. The next one went over to the other side. Lo and behold, the last one was a direct hit at the entire group of people that was over on Saturday. And it mm. exploded. And, like, my grandma had, like, holes in her shirt. I got hit in the knee and the arm. Oh, my God. Um, it was, you know, people were, like, kind of freaked out. I was, I think I was, like, probably three double shots in. So I was, uh, I was, like... I was I, I was having a hard time not laughing. Like I understood the serious and the gra- seriousness and the gravity of the situation, but I was like, "Oh my god, that was that could have been so bad." I'm like almost dying. Once everyone was okay, I like I couldn't help but laugh. But like, mm. it was a bit nutty. Nice. It's not like a good time. It's always a good time when you get fireworks shot at you. It's, yeah. It's, it, it's a it's a new experience because it, it was one of those that was like, you know, they shoot off the thing and then it explodes later. You know, it's like the big boy ones, so it was pretty good. Was it really just for your your birthday that they were doing that? It wasn't necessarily for my birthday. It wasn't like a birthday thing, quote unquote, because like, you know, we had a bunch of people over. My it, like my it, we have a bunch of September birthdays, so it just kind of seemed like a get together for people, and yeah. it also happened to be our birthdays, so we just kind of like made it a thing. Ah, okay. It was fun. It was nice. It was a lot. But it was fun. Man. All right. I'm taking the soy sauce. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's uh, soy sauce. That's my my roommate's girlfriend. So. She's taking soy sauce. Yeah, she's I've taking heard. she's taking all the goddamn soy sauce. Damn. I, I hate to hate hate to be the bearer of bad news, but she's taking the soy sauce. Yeah. All the soy sauce. Yep. Later. She's on a podcast now and she doesn't even yeah. know it. Welcome to the show, Julie. She doesn't even <laughs> know it. I'm going to send that to Adam or the show to Adam. And I'm going to time stamp it. Like, dude, <laughs> check out who was on Fake Racers this week. <laughs> dude, your girlfriend was like on Fake Racers. She was totally uh, happy to be here. I'll, I'll tell you guys what Julie's picks for the race is this week. Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Make sure you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, yeah. I don't know. Do we want to just go? Are we just gonna go? Like, we I can. Guess. Yeah. It was football game of this weekend in All you right. know two years, so that was fun. You know, catch me on ABC this weekend in the big house. Yeah. I'm gonna have to find the a screen grab of you on TV now. I'm in the corner, <laughs> and I don't. If I was wearing red, I'd say I look like a tomato because I'm pretty round. I don't know. I guess I look like a lemon. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it was fun sitting up front. You know. Being back in a stadium, I I can't remember if we ever sh- if I've shown you. I think Davey's seen it. But when Super Mega did their video about when they sponsored Tommy Joe Martins, um, you can see all of us sitting in the front row of that race during the pace laps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fun though. It was a, it was a good time. We won, so that was good too. You know, it's never it's never good when your team loses to a Mac team. So good thing we. Didn't do that. Mm. Uh, lost our best receiver for the year, though. So that's uh, very unfortunate. Um, I mean, football. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. David doesn't watch football and I don't watch college. So, yeah. <laughs> it was fun, though. It was fun being made wow. of the game. We all sucked at our cold opens today. Yeah. <laughs> it's It's been a long week. It has been a long week. It's yeah, been quite I'm, long. I'm very tired. But it's been a long week. I had a good, I, I had a good time watching nascar and racing this weekend so i'm yeah. excited I'm, I'm here for it i'm ready for i'm ready for a a a podcast as it were a yeah. podcast as it were of course folks this is the fake racers podcast with me joe with me davy and with me matthew Whoa. and we are so excited to bring you this episode please if you haven't already make sure you hit the like button subscribe to us on youtube um, the like button is on your podcast platform and YouTube, so I don't have to, you know, say it twice. Go ahead and smash that like button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Yeah. Um, 
But can't thank you enough for listening, for tuning in, for whatever you're doing. Hopefully this show doesn't go off the rails, although it seems like it is already trying to. No. Um, Craig, you know, Craig, our our audio guy, is just he's just being a silly yeah. billy tonight. Craig's checked out even more than Davey and I right now. <laughs> no, I'm not checked out, but Craig, um, that guy, that guy yeah. is a real problem. Yeah. I'm have to fire it's not, him. It's not what we're paying him the big bucks for. <laughs> paying him the big bucks. Um, we got a bunch of great racing coming up this week on JTN All Star Racing on Wednesday the eighth from Darlington Bomb Squad Cup on the ninth from Richmond, um, and then more and more racing as the month continues on. Next week is going to be jam packed, so you're not going to want to miss a second of it. You're going to want to make sure you're subscribed, notification turned on, and whatnot to our YouTube. But there was a lot of racing this past weekend, guys, and we're going to dive right on into it because you, your favorite driver. Davy, Matthew, your favorite driver won the Xfinity Series race this past yeah. weekend at the Darlington yeah. Raceway. Um, Noah Gregson comes home victorious. I don't care if I'm saying that wrong. Um, <laughs> it was a very eventful race. It was the first. Uh, it was our first real uh, look at how terrible Turn Two was going to be throughout the weekend. Um. With that transition, really would have liked to see them pave maybe a little bit farther down the back straightaway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, good for Gregson because they just announced he's going to return next week. We kind of, I think we talked about it last week or the week before. Kind of, someone's going to be on the outside looking in at Junior Motorsports. Maybe not now. Yeah. Um, because the other two guys that haven't been officially officially re-signed, um, they both carry enough sponsorship to. Or they, they validate having a full-time car. So, what were your guys' biggest takeaways from L Race? Um, I would say that it was it's definitely good for Gregson. I mean, he puts to, he puts together a pretty good win finally in the Xfinity series after having a quiet season, which let's be honest, most people would have accepted a quiet Noah Gregson season given how his season started, how his last season was. Um he, I think he needed to kind of shut up for a little bit, maybe just chug away like he has and, and you know, rattled off a W. It's good for him. As he's, you know, maybe that team's getting hot, maybe not. You know, it really kind of will, I mean, we'll, it kind of remains to be seen what kind of momentum that they gain from this and what momentum they're building. But um, I mean, it can't, couldn't have come at a better time for him, like you said, announce the JRM, the Junior Motorsports stuff. Got his W. <laughs> it's not been the best season for him, but like I said, maybe that's maybe he kind of needed that. Uh, yeah, my internet just dropped there for a second, uh, so I didn't hear what Davey said. But I mean, yeah, he finally won a race on merit, so Oof. took you long. Oh, enough. ouch! I I mean, I'm not going to get excited about Noah Gregson winning a race. I've, oh, I've no. made my thoughts clear. Like, yeah, he drove a good um, race, whatever. I don't have anything else to say. About it. Not surprising to see him do well at a track where you got to ride the wall or high tire wear, mm-hmm. um, worn out racetrack. That's kind of you know you look back at Homestead how good they were there in the spring. Um, I'm pretty sure they were decent here at Darlington in the spring too. So not surprising. He finished yeah he finished like fourth or fifth I think. Yeah. So not surprising. Uh, good for him to finally close a race because that's what he has been lacking. Um, which you can say about a lot of young, a lot of young drivers, you know, you look at Harrison Burton still seems to have problems closing races out. Um, Daniel Hemrick, I, I don't know. I don't know what you consider him as a driver, <laughs> but um, sometimes well, it's just week, bad luck. I was going to say this week was another one of where it was like, all right, what else is going to go wrong this week? Because, <laughs> well, you know, God. Um but yeah, I it was it was an Xfinity race. I don't even think I watched the whole thing because I got back um, from the game kind of after it already started. So, I don't know. truck series, Sheldon Creed, Creed. Um, took home the victory. Um, second win <laughs> in this round. Much better race for the trucks at Darlington yeah. than the last one. Yeah. <laughs> good heavens, good Lord Almighty, that one was terrible. <laughs> they were able to run a lap without junking it, so that was good. Park Clegham in top five. Yeah, I think you actually won that race from our picks well, from last week. Because I'm simply the best. Or did I hit did I have Austin I hit or Matt I you think had I, Austin Hill? I had Austin Hill, yeah. Or did well, you finish? Uh, 
Uh, I'm simply the best. That's a good question. I can't remember. It wasn't top five. I had Carson Hosevar because he finished 11th or 12th. And then you did AJ or Allgaier finish better? I think AJ did. Okay, well, Davey won this week. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, my cup pick didn't go very well either, but we'll get to that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, But Creed wins. He holds off John Hunter Nemechek. Nemechek, I think, is pretty much locked into the next round, too. Uh, it was I think he two. is mathematically locked in, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Creed, obviously, with the two wins, gets himself some more playoff points, sweeps Darlington for the year. Mm. And I don't know. There's not a lot too much to write home about. It was a it was a uneventful truck race, which was a good thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, outside of Derek Krauss continuing his um well, his, you uh, know, string of terror. Can't but, you know. can't blame the kid for <laughs> you can't say that he isn't trying. Yeah. Nisa's so. uh Twitter page though was pretty that was good. Pretty good. That. that was pretty good. <laughs> that they was hard. unbelievable. <laughs> um we move yeah. on though to the main event of Sunday, because for you know we did a truck cup double header for good value for the fans. Um, it's always the fans winning, but uh, Denny Hamlin, of course, won the Southern Five Hundred for the third time, his fourth win at Darlington. Yay! Good for him. Um, yeah. I won money, so <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was like six bones, but that's okay. Um, bones. Bones, but uh, playoff drivers. The, re- the real story of the night was the playoff drivers with struggles. Uh, we start with Alex Bowman, <laughs> William Myron. Most of them. <laughs> I want to give a quick shout out to Greg Ives uh, because he watched Brandon Jones' crew not pit his car when there was clearly a problem, and it screwed up his race. And then, and literally the a week thing. later, Greg Ives does the exact same thing with a competition caution coming up. And you know what the worst part is? It's not even the first time he's done it with his driver in a playoff race. Back in 2015 at Charlotte, Junior and Carl Edwards got into the wall. Junior pa- or got together. Junior pancaked the wall, and Greg Ives was like, "No, nah, it's fine." And then Junior blew a right front later. Guess what? That knocked him out of the playoffs. And probably and then, made him crack his coconut. Probably. Um, and then six <laughs> years later, it happens it. again. Yeah, I know we're 10 laps into the race and there's a competition coming up in f- in five laps. No, let's not pit him. Whatever. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> very uh, friggin' Hendrick cars. It was like, I was like wondering who was going to drop next, dude. All, all the playoff drivers with, with the problems. I was just waiting <laughs> for more of them to just drop like flies. Um, for, for those of you watching my Twitter page, I was constantly manifesting more problems for playoff drivers, and it kept happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, if there was a race to have a problem as a playoff driver, this must have been the one. Because like, because who, who are the who are the four out right now? McDowell, uh, Kyle Busch. Um, God, I don't even I, know. I think Reddick is still on the outside because Reddick faded at the end of that race. No, then... Reddick's the last guy in, and he's only in. He's tied with somebody. Yeah. But he oh, I think it's finish. Almarola then. Who's like yeah, it's just not on Almarola? The might not be Almarola. It might be Bowman. Well, yeah, Bowman's the first guy out, but he's tied. With yeah, he's whoever's... tied with Reddick. Yeah, yeah, Bowman first out. Kyle Busch, William Byron, Michael McDowell. Oh, okay. Byron, that's who it is. Yeah. So, um, you know, William Byron also got kind of caught up in that stuff too when yeah. Bowman. And then they had issues later on in the race. Uh, Michael McDowell. <sighs> uh, and we talked about this on Twitter. So go check <laughs> that out. But uh, Davey, I'm going to start with you because I haven't heard your opinion of, on the thir- what happened with the 34 card. Um, God, honestly, that happened so early in the race. And that race was so long. I'm going to have to refresh myself real quick. Um, uh, Eric Jones stays out on older tires. Only got to stay out. Choose the bottom. Uh, field, Keep in mind, it was it was lap thirty. Field splits him three wide. <laughs> listen, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Field splits him three wide. Uh, everyone makes it through okay. A um, couple laps later, McDowell's trying to pass him. Spins out after passing him on exit of two. I, I just hold on. I'm getting a, I'm getting a good replay here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, don't... I see. I mean, like you really like who? Who are you gonna really blame for that? Like, I'm not blaming Jones or anything. It's one of those where it's like we talked about so many times. 
Like, why are you leaving cars out on old tires in front of the field, especially on lap three? It always cause the wreck. And again, no, no Joe, you're going to go everybody else missed them, the but wreck. it's like... It didn't well, it, cause the wreck. Right? Yeah, that, I can't. I can't. I can't blame Eric Jones for that. 34 I, was ahead of him. Yeah. I Oh, he passed him at the wrong spot, and... Uh, oh, no. Oh, I mean, I can... I can you, s- I can see what happened right there. He hit the patch of asphalt, and I mean, sorry, Michael McDowell kind of—he's big winging it right there, and for like he for—I mean, he made that problem himself. Like he for no reason kind of just starts. Like he goes into a wiggle, but like the correction that he makes is so extreme that it sends him up the racetrack. He's forced to hit the wall. Like he does that to himself. I'm not yeah, saying I mean, like that's... it's not a mistake someone would make. It's just. I'm not saying it's 100% yeah. Eric Jones' fault, but like the way he he catches him and they make contact like right before that, it screws up his entire life. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why he misjudged the exit. This show is so bad. <laughs> this is not a good. This is not a good night. But uh, now your internet's doing a little thing every once in a while, and like I I I know what you mean. But at the same time, he makes that move. He t- he's a little shallow on exit. Like I get it. Um, at the same time, you you it's it's lap thirty or whatever it is. Like you gotta you gotta account for that on corner exit. You can't just continue the way. I mean, it's so early in the race. Michael McDowell seems to have like a relatively decent car, mm-hmm. so I I would just wouldn't risk it by continuing to go hard. Maybe you know a thing or two about exit. a guy maybe taking a risk he doesn't need to take off a turn two at Darlington. I don't what I feel, I feel like there's a reference here that might hurt me. Jimmy Johnson. Um, okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, but, but that's what it came down to. I think um, we, we, you're right. We have talked about guys staying out on old tires and um, yeah, it's lap 30 of a race, but I mean, I think the context we were talking about it is that the pay window is open and you definitely know you're not going to be able to compete. And you stay out and you ruin a finish of a race. I thought that's the context we were talking about it when we talked about it last. Um, Darlington's maybe not a track that I would personally make that call, but the, <laughs> the call the call was made to save the set of tires um, because they had already come down for new tires in that race on the on the competition yellow. A team like Eric Jones, their only chance is to hopefully have an extra set. And there'd be a bunch of cautions towards the end of the race where everyone's coming down every five laps for tires. Um, that's their only chance to try to pull out a top 20. They ended up finishing 30 something. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Southern 500 winner, Eric Jones, too. So you have to have a little, as a crew chief, you probably have a little faith in your driver, too, to be able to maybe hold his ground, which he was doing fine. I thought, you know, he got taken three wide, and it's not like we had a big three, three wide wreck there in turns one and two. Um, I know you're not blaming them. I'm just, I don't know. I saw people screaming and yelling, and I don't yeah. like it. I mean, I my thing is, it's just like it was an unfortunate situation, and it bums me out for everybody mm-hmm. up front row because it's like, oh, you got they've put together such a good season, right? And it, they showed up to Darlington with pace, and it was like, hey, maybe they won't be a first round exit. Well, that's over. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that team might be gone next year too, so that kind of stinks. But yeah. Maybe tell your simply. calm your driver down a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Kyle Busch, that was a guy that needed to be calmed down. Woo-hoo. Yeah, that was a bit excessive. I I love yeah. Kyle Busch. I think he's fantastic for the sport. <laughs> he almost ran that late but <laughs> can't be running people over. And you know, I saw a really good example, or like I saw a really good point. Like, how would Kyle Busch feel if that were his family in pit road that almost got ran over? Not probably not very good. Probably wouldn't have yeah. very many nice things to say. So. Yeah, uh, I'm, that, that nine, fine was the right call. So Yeah, $50,000 today it came out. Um, no points penalty. No fine for what he said on TV, which that's an FCC thing anyways. I yeah. think that's um, fine. I think the oh, fine yeah. is, is, is the penalty that he got was, was fine. Yeah. Yep. Pit road, speed limits and protocols are in place for a reason. People have been hurt and or killed on pit road. Just because I don't care how many championships you've won. There's no friggin' room for that, you know? Two, Agreed. by the way, too. Yeah. In case you forgot. Two times. But we don't care, Joe. <laughs> we don't care. Um, we don't dang care. 
Gosh, the last of the playoff drivers to have a major issue was Chase Elliott late in the Who race. Cares? Lost tire Who's he? going down into turn one. Who cares about Chase Elliott? Um, well, Blaney had a problem him. too. So, oh yeah, I forgot to put Blaney on here, but he's just had so much momentum. I think it's it's what was bound to happen. Yeah. So, but I mean um, that that problem with Blaney though, it's the same issue they had at Nashville that really worries me with Penske. Yeah. Well, the the thing too with with Blaney spin is that completely changed the finish of that race because you had Mm -hmm. that situation where Larson and Chastain were running down Truex and Hamlin and there was like can they get there before they have to make that final stop and it was like oh this is gonna be so interesting oh yeah and like (laughs) obviously the finish of the race was still good but it was a bummer that we lost oh my god a race with strategy was entertaining who would have thought that thanks oh wow a 500 mile race at Darlington that was just as long as the Coke 600 was entertaining yeah. Truth. Hey, Ouch and pain. Ross Chastain was impressive. Yeah. Yes, Very he good was. driving. Oh, yeah. uh, it's it, the Ross Chastain um, personal dichotomy has been interesting this year, flipping between driving like a menace and then, you know, driving <laughs> like he kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I want to root for Ross Chastain really bad. Um, nights like last night make it, or nights like sorry, sorry, nights like Sunday night, sorry, make it very easy for me to do that. Um, just a good run, yeah. good solid run. I think what you're seeing with Ross too is is it's a thing that a lot of rookies have to do is you have to make those mistakes to know like what the limits are and everything. And mm-hmm. I think Ross has gotten a lot yeah. of his troubles out of the way early in the season, and now he's hitting. Good his God, stride. we hope so. Oh, my Problem Lord. with that statement is he's not a rookie. It's, it's semantic or semantics, whatever. Who cares? It's like Alex Bowman wasn't a rookie. Yeah, <laughs> you, get I, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's um, like his, his first real shot at Cup. Yeah. Um. Again, Ganassi as a whole, Kurt Busch was up front most of the race too. Um. I they they talked about it during the broadcast how Hendrick's still building new cars. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Ganassi's still building new cars too. Um, heck, they had a next gen car out there at the test today. Mm. We'll get to that later, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're maybe putting up, pushing all their chips in to try to win a couple more races before the end of the year, whether it's Ross or it's Kurt Busch. Um, but Essie has really improved as the summer went on, which it's a shame to see them leave. Um, but you also got to think everyone's getting reset to zero next year, so. Maybe there just mm. wouldn't be the funds and whatnot. It's a good time to get out if you're trying to get out of the sport, yeah. but it's also a good time to get in if you're trying to get in. And it's unfortunate that they are they are one of the folks that feel like it's time to get out. But again, Chastain impressive. Kyle Larson does his video game move at the end. Literally turned my attention away, looked over and saw Kyle Larson in the wall and got terrified. <laughs> um, OK, there's a couple things. It was cool. Yeah. Again, Hendrick is building brand new race cars right now still. And he does that. Mm-hmm. And I just. It's not a disrespect for the people that build those cars, but it dang sure feels like it. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't think he's winning that race. So, yeah, whatever. I, I mean, I, I think he got closer. You got it, man, actually. I was going to say, I mean, Larson's in the position in this first round where he's basically he's unless something catastrophic happens at Darlington, he's basically locked into the next round. Mm. So like, you kind of feel like that whole team is like, why not? <laughs> let's just see what happens. Yeah. Let's go try to win a race. Yeah. There's a, there's a level of, I think maybe some of those employees are like, you know, I want to see the guy that I wrench on the guy, the guy's car that I wrench on. I want to see that guy go for a win like that. If, if, if yeah. he's not doing that, then what's the point? Like there is a level to that. I understand. And I'm sure that, that, that feeling exists, but there, there is also a smart part of small part of me that sees him do that. Understands that he destroyed that race car in the process just to finish second. And you know, it, it was a long shot that he was going to win that race. He came closer I think than anyone thought he was going to get to winning that race. Oh yeah. Um, if he was to, if he was solidly to Denny's outside there on the exit, like in the middle of three on the exit of four, I think he maybe gets a shot, but, um, I do. I, I see, I see what you're saying, Joe, about, uh, just kind of seems like a, 
a little yeah, smack like, around. Not that Hendrick Motorsports doesn't have the money to pay the employees and <laughs> no, the absolutely cars, not. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. It's fine, especially with the history that he has of choking races away. I don't like seeing him do something like that where it's like intentionally because what happens if he spins out in that corner and then all of a sudden he finishes twenty fifth? You know what I mean? Like those are possibilities in this situation. I mean, you talked about oh, they're in this, you know, this in this round there. Oh, who cares what happens? Because we have so many playoff points. We're we're so far to the good. Who cares? But um, I feel like sure, but also like don't take unnecessary risks. And that was a very unnecessary risk because he still finished second. He was gonna finish second. Um, maybe if okay. Ross was a little bit closer, I I I, I don't know, but um. Every point matters, and almost almost threw away a couple of them doing something like that. And y'all just hate fun, don't you? No, I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. I would I would have sent it. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I get I get. What I'm you're all saying. on board with it. I'm, like, I'm, yeah. I just there's so many 750 tracks left. We have three mile and a half left. A road course in Talladega. So there mm-hmm. are four 750 tracks left that are actual like you know what I mean like they're yeah. oval 750s. Two of which are the next two weeks. And uh, if 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 Hendrick is still making brand new race cars, and that was obviously a very good race car, I don't know. Maybe maybe they don't bring that car back. Maybe they weren't planning on bringing it back. I don't know. I don't have the radio. I feel I like you kind of have to do that with Darlington though, because like you go to Darlington with the intention of tearing up the right side of your car. It's like yeah, it's like but you don't a... go with the intention of tearing up the suspension because you hit the you you tried to knock the wall down. Yeah. You don't go to Darlington intentionally trying to knock the wall down. You know you're going to hit the wall, but you don't go to knock it down. He knocked it down. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to cut you off. Come on. Come on. Come at me. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. I mean, I'm just saying. It's. I feel like it's the same mentality them. you have when you bring a car to Why is everyone so like spicy? Eldora or, or Bristol. Where you're like, it's probably going to get destroyed, so whatever. Why is everyone so spicy? <laughs> I was so spicy. I was it's spicy. the fact that I didn't have to. That's the thing that bothers me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it didn't have to. But Denny Hamlin won a race. Uh, we're, we're, not gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the <laughs> the outside stuff. Um, no, I want to talk about. It. Let's talk about it. Go for it. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I had a good joke there, but I don't know if it's appropriate for the show. So and I don't feel like buying another diecast. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, Jenny. Hamlin wins though race his first race of the year. Um, all of a sudden people are saying he's a real championship threat. I I don't know why he wasn't before. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like he led the point for like twenty races. You're like, is Denny uh, Hamlin? Yeah. I might be onto something. <laughs> is Denny Hamlin hot at the right time? Question mark. Has he peaked um, too soon? He already won. Yeah. Has Hendrick Motorsports <laughs> peaked too soon? What? Question mark. What? Well, I mean, they wrecked four cars this week, so maybe. Is Hendrick Motorsports on the decline <laughs> because Hendrick they Motorsports. haven't won a race in four races? Yeah. Hendrick Motorsports playoffs a flop? I mean, two well, of their cars are on the I was going to say, two of them are in trouble, so... <laughs> <laughs> we might be on to something. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> you might have been right this whole time. But Hamlin winning gets them into the next round, so that's pretty much two spots. There. What it does? Sorry. All but locked up. Uh, with him and Larson, because I think Larson's plus 80 on the cutoff. Something stupid like that. I think he might be a little secure. <laughs> he, he is pretty far away from the bubble, but you know who's not far away from the bubble? That's us, because we're uh, we're we're on the bubble. You know what bubbles are? They're 3D circles, and you know what, we know what else is a circle? Circle B diecast uh, for your, all your diecast needs. Use code JTN for, uh, for your free shipping on your Circle B diecast order. Joe, if you want to say it the official way, you can do that. But I feel like they like they'd appreciate me doing it. They do. I'm sure they do. They uh, do. Matthew, what's your pick for the week? <laughs> okay, he's speechless. He's frozen. <laughs> Matt's he gone. Uh, my pick for the week is Chase Briscoe's <laughs> Ford Performance Racing School Mustang in the 164 scale. You can check out the link to it in the description below. Davey, what you got this week? I got, and I wanted to get it the week before, but I got the Bubba Wallace 2021 Columbia car. He ran it at Daytona. Um, beautiful, beautiful little grain on that thing. It is for pre-order. 
So, what that means, Joe, you know what it means. When you order that diecast, you're not going to be charged for it. When it ships, however, you'll get charged for it. But you want to know what you won't get charged for because you use code JTN? The shipping. So pre-order that diecast. Hey. Use code JTN. Don't pay for the shipping. But when it ships, you'll know. That that code's worth like ten dollars. I'm saying. I'm just just throwing that out there. You can get two pizzas from Little Caesars. Feed the whole family and the extended family. Um, hot and ready. Hot and a whole ready. hot and ready. Not sponsored by Little Caesars. Little Caesars. I wish that'd be pretty cool. I, Dude, I imagine eat hot too and much ready. Little Caesars growing. We up. could absolutely come up with like a cool hot and ready segment. We need to pitch this. I will. Do, how about we go to Little Caesars corporate headquarters? I think Matt's back. Yeah, you just gotta come. There he is. Uh, Matt, what's your pick for the week? Uh, my pick. Let me grab the link real quick. It's a monster uh, truck. It is. <laughs> we went I digging through Circle truck. B, and <laughs> uh, we found the Boss AMPM one forty third scale uh, Chevrolet S ten Kings of the Crunch monster truck from nineteen seventy two, and Dude. I can be yours. For twenty four ninety nine, which gets you over that twenty dollar threshold for your free shipping if you use code JTN. Dude, Remember, JTN. folks, CircleBeeDieCast.com oh is your home dude. for all your racing related memorabilia needs. Use code JTN at checkout on your order of twenty dollars or more to receive free shipping. Again, that's code JTN. CircleBeeDieCast.com. Um, real quick, Matt, can you say I am Monster Truck? I am Monster Truck. That's awesome. Okay, we're good. Hang on, I got to rumor. turn into you real quick. Rumor. <laughs> rumor. 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 Let's start with let's start with the big one this week that had everyone going crazy yesterday. Um, oh man. NASCAR is considering moving the clash to the LA Coliseum two weeks before the Daytona 500. Um. What are our thoughts? I mean, I can go first, but I'll let you guys go first because I don't want to take everything like I normally do. Okay, so logistically, um, I'm not going to talk about it because that's boring and lame and no one wants to talk about logistics. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's fun. What, like, what are we going to do if we just keep doing the same stuff over and over again? We're going to stagnate. So, you know logistics aside because i don't want to think about it because that's boring and only losers think about it um go to the la go to the la coliseum make it an event make it a thing promote it advertise it it's going to be nuts it's going to be bowman gray but on the west coast and it's going to be gnarly like why not why not oh i'll tell you why not because west coast and then daytona and then driving and then far away and then shut up I don't care. I don't care. Um, it's going to be cool. I, people that are trying to say, well, just go to Bowman Gray. It's already there. Um, uh, Missing the point. You can get so many more yeah. people in the LA Coliseum, too. Yeah. Missing the point. And, the LA um, Coliseum is one of the most iconic sporting venues in all of like America. Yep. And the Olympics are going to be in LA, I think, in 2028 or 2032. No. Go to New Smyrna. No, yeah. go to New Smyrna instead. <laughs> well, go to New Ma No Mask Speedway out in the woods. North North Wilkesboro. Tear up the weeds. Yeah, race there. Um, because all these West Coast tracks, they be down. All these tracks in NASCAR, they're downsizing. But North Wilkesboro, we're ready for a race. I can see a a clash running it in L.A. Yeah, Where's audio the listeners. Where's the Super my face? But Where's man. the Super Bowl this year, Matt? It's it's in LA. Oh, it's in LA. You mean yeah. probably the same weekend as this race? I think so. Actually, I wonder if it is the same weekend. Uh, they're saying two weeks before the 500. The 500 is usually the last weekend or the second to last weekend. Super Bowl is usually the second weekend or first weekend. So what Super Bowl are we on? Fifty something. Fifty eight. Fifty nine. Fifty six. I think. Oh, I was off, but. Yeah, um, there's cross promotion there. If I, I don't know if Fox is broadcasting it. Um, uh, NBC is doing the Super Bowl this year. Okay, so that kind of stinks. But <laughs> if Fox was broadcasting it, the amount of cross promotion they could do. Oh um, yeah. Even if it's still out there, NBC I'm sure would be willing to throw a few bones if it meant maybe 
you know, maybe I'm NBC Joe Buck. Welcome to the NASCAR clash at the LA Coliseum. I'm here with Troy Aikman. Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> is a lot of people saying, well, there's no race fans out there. No, that's not correct. And also you go to a destination town that people would vacation to, um, or city, whatever. Yeah. Um, not that you want to be in LA, but like you're at least going to do something cool in LA. I mean, um, it makes sense that it would draw a lot of people because most people like people are going to go out to LA for the Super Bowl, probably going to go there for a week. Like, like we did with Charlotte. So like, Hey, there's this NASCAR race at the LA Coliseum. So I assume tickets will probably be pretty cheap yeah. too. Like, because it's a, cl- it's the clash. So it'll be like a hundred laps. Hopefully and like what people have said, it's to drum up support to see if people will be interested in the, um, the auto club short track that they're going to be converting it to. Which I think is the big thing. Cause I think eventually that short track is going to be the finale. I think that's what they're going to do because Honestly, NASCAR probably. owns that track and you know, you don't have to worry about weather being too cool. Um, you're not in the middle of nowhere like you are in Phoenix. Um, it's a good, it's a good shout. And I could see that happening or I could see him going between the two tracks and having some kind of rotation. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I hate everyone always putting these things down and then bringing up you know, the racetrack that hasn't been operational in 30 years or, yeah. um, you know, Bowman Gray or New Smyrna, like it would be great to get cup cars there. I don't think anyone's trying to tell you otherwise, but logistically. It could it, it can't work. You you can say you can make it work all you want. It can't work. Because, Too big a show. To, exactly. There, there's a reason why, you know. They built all these mile and a half with a hundred thousand seating capacity, and you can yep. say, "Oh, well, they don't fill those, and they took great." You're right, but it's easier to take grandstands down to put them back than put them up. Yeah, um, look at Nashville. <laughs> yeah, and and like since we're talking about like I'm all on board with the whole preservation of North Wilkesboro, but not for the Cup Series to come back there. Like, it's Truck Series. Yeah, Bam. trucks would be perfect for it. Or send it's, Arca there or something, but, or even just preservation because it's a you know, it's a historic, a historic part of NASCAR's place. history. But it shouldn't host the Clash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, there's a reason why the sport went away from a lot of these facilities. Yeah, not saying they can't go back there, but the investment has to be a lot, and uh, the money to make that investment is most likely not there, uh, especially coming out of a pandemic. But yep. I think it's cool. I don't know. Yeah. I think there's there's the potential cross promotion. You get Super Bowl people maybe to go to the race. Maybe you run it on a Saturday. Super Bowls on Sunday. Um. Yeah, I I I have preached this many times on this podcast. I'm going to continue to do so. Um, culture of fearlessness. We need to have that. I think it's important. And like I always say, I'm not talking about race car drivers being big big bad super duper heroes. I'm talking about everything top down a culture of fearlessness and like, like fearless enough, like, like not scared to go out and try a NASCAR cup race, an exhibition, the clash at the LA Coliseum. That is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bristol dirt next gen, you know, yeah. all of these ideas, all these things, all these things that are happening, all the schedule shakeups and we're, we're going to get to even more here in a second. Like I want that. I want to not be afraid to do that. I do not want to stagnate, you know, too often we see in motorsports that people are afraid to change stuff. Um, you know, Formula One has had a few pretty good seasons, but like, where where's the fearlessness there? Where 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 are we making gains? Where where are we changing stuff? Where are we seeing things? IndyCar, same thing. The Nashville Street Race was a step in the right direction. It didn't not quite pan out race wise, but the event was phenomenal. But like, that's what I'm talking about. The more we can do stuff like that in NASCAR, I think the the more we start to kind of see and feel where the identity is and where it's going, because we can't do that if we keep just doing the same stuff over and over again, but then band-aiding other stuff like the point system or, you know, the package, like we have to continue to try and find and look for stuff. It is crazy to think about the fact that from 2002 to 2017, there was a new track in that entire time. 
That's a 15 year stretch where they changed the schedule majorly once. And I mean, yes, yeah. they stopped going to Rockingham during that time, but they just gave a second date to erase those already on there. They only yeah. branched and, out one time during that. And it time. got stale. Mm-hmm. Like it was stale by that time. Like we, it was so, everyone was kind of over it. Like and, everyone was and, clamoring. What were you going to say, Jeff? I was just going to say that's the danger of the whole more short tracks, more short tracks, more short tracks argument because you can't. You know, NASCAR got in trouble in 2015 when they signed the signed that five year deal with all these race tracks, right? That's yeah. where they got in trouble because the, all of a sudden, you know, mile and a half don't work because next gen has way too much side force to run them effectively, and um, it's just it. And now this are you know the more short tracks argument, the more it's not, it shouldn't be more of any type of track. It should just be more unique tracks. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it shouldn't the, the arguments like Bristol dirt. That's unique, and it's unique compared to normal Bristol when we're going to have the Bristol Night Race in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Two completely different racetracks that you made out of one, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, Daytona Road Course, perfect example. Charlotte and the Roval, perfect example. Yeah, and, and, and even while some people might not like these ideas, some people might not like the Daytona Road Course, some people might not like Bristol Dirt, the fact is we're, we're trying them, mm-hmm. and we're seeing if it works. And if it works, and in my opinion, I think Bristol Dirt can work. I think the Charlotte Roval has worked. been a massive success. Like, oh if yeah, we Charlotte if Roval we is like just, one of the best races of the year ever. If year. we didn't just try that, imagine uh, we would be going to Charlotte like normal, and no one would be excited. Mm-hmm. But now, now we have the Roval, and it's 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 its own thing. It's its own marketable, tangible product. Unless it gets the boost from the playoffs. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I mean, every but, and it helps that every Roval race has been really good too. Mm-hmm. So. so it's just about that. It's like you said, culture of fearlessness. Don't be afraid to try something. And if it doesn't work, you don't have to do it again. Like, exactly. And, and that's why. And you, honestly, you know, makes... the more I think about it, the more this LA Coliseum race makes sense. Because, like you were saying, the Daytona 500 is what two weeks after the Super Bowl or one? Um, like this past year, it was the week the week after, but usually it's two weeks. Yeah. So if you go there the week before the Super Bowl, that gives you two to three weeks between the quarter or the, the LA Coliseum race and the Daytona 500, which solves the logistical issue of moving back and forth. Mm-hmm. Even though I know we said we don't want to talk logistics because it's for boring people, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, we can talk logistics by the way. I was yeah. just, why know. not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw stuff at the wall. See what happens. You know, again, NASCAR's super stale schedule wise for the last two decades. And now we're trying things. So yeah. yep. you, you want to know how you figure out if you, if it works, you do it. Yep. And it sucks that we not have to I leave. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not I raising. It sucks that we have to leave these giant multi-million dollar racetracks behind, you know, like the Chicago lands and, and, you know, uh, Texas. Well, actually not really bad that Texas is getting left behind because Texas sucks, but you know, they built all these, these cookie cutters in the, the boom of the late nineties and early two thousands. And now we're abandoning a bunch of them. And it's like, it sucks that that's an investment. That's basically, not gone, but you know, you paid all that money and now it's like, all right, well, we're not going there anymore. But it's like, I mean, that's a hole that you dug yourself into. So, yeah. well, speaking of schedule, because I mean, we're kind of hitting, hitting around the bush here. Um, well, let's talk some 2022 news because there's two couple big things going on right now. First off, Adam Stern earlier today reported, and by earlier today, I mean, um, on September the 7th, 2021. Like uh, 10 minutes before we started, we recording. started and then all of a sudden I had to make changes. Um, gateway, a uh, worldwide technology raceway at gateway, whatever you want to call it, um, is going to be added supposedly to the cup series schedule with Pocono losing one of its two double header races. Um, that on top of, you know, NASCAR really wanted to do that LA Coliseum clash. Um, and probably, you know, Auto Club's going to be back on the schedule. We we already knew that. Um, Kentucky, I wouldn't be surprised to see Kentucky back on the schedule because that Atlanta, that uh, July Atlanta race was Kentucky's race. And so some of the rumblings about it are that they only took the race away from Kentucky because they didn't know if they'd be able to have fans by July. Um, I heard the same thing about Michigan losing June, but. And I doubt we go to Michigan twice. Um, but uh, calendar shakeup. Gateway. Do we like Gateway? Do we not like Gateway? It has the infrastructure, right? 
I'm fine with Gateway. Minus the Gateway power issues, on. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we keep the power on, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay with Gateway. I'm, yeah. I think you're going to agree with me, Joe. I'm, I'm sad that Pocono is losing a race because, you know, again, unique race unique tracks. Race Pocono track. is. The Bowman curse continues. That's a good point. It's <laughs> Watch out, real. Dover and Richmond. You're next. <sighs> Stop. Don't do it. I like <laughs> Richmond a lot, and I like Dover yeah. a lot. Don't do Rich, it. I'm Richmond sorry my is... favorite driver is doing this, you guys. Um. <laughs> Gateway again, unique racetrack, right? One and two are very different than three and four. There, yep. um, mm-hmm. different challenges. Indy cars obviously been running there forever now, and the trucks have been running there for a while. <laughs> um, and before that, the the nationwide Xfinity Bush whatever was running there. So, um, they've held a lot of races there, major yeah. touring races. So it's not like they won't be ready for it. Like uh, um, maybe like a Nashville wasn't maybe necessarily ready for it when they had their race in June. Um, but it's sad to see Pocono lose a race. It's always sad to see these tracks. The worst, the, the bad part about it is, though, though Pocono double header was so much fun and so cool. Yeah, and the reason and, those Pocono races were good is, be- in my opinion, because they're a little shorter. You know. <laughs> yep, yeah. And that race will be back to four hundred miles. Yep. Pocono is one of those tracks too that, like, it doesn't always put on the best races, but I like it because it's unique. It's it's mm. always fun to watch that. So, agreed. Um, and I just really like driving Pocono and Sims. So, <laughs> and it's a, it's a family owned track that's going to lose yeah. a race to another privately owned track. Um, so that's unfortunate, but you know, someone's yeah. got to give, someone's got to take. Yeah. Do um, we think there's going to be any crossover with the IndyCar event at Gateway, or is it going to be a? I see. That's what I don't know because the trucks have been running with IndyCar. I I would very much like to see it. But I also, if we're going to, if IndyCar is going to keep doing a, a GP at Indianapolis, I think it would be very wise for IndyCar to make that the only time that they do a double header, right? You know, all Penske Entertainment, they own the series, they own the track. So mm-hmm. why give away that exclusivity to another promoter? Fair point. Um, you know, I saw people saying, oh, put Pocono back on IndyCar schedule, which I think, you know, Pocono probably can be and, you know, should be on the IndyCar schedule if we're, you know, <laughs> you've made the argument, Davey, if we're going to go to Indianapolis, what's so dangerous about going to Pocono? Um, so, and they, they need more oval ovals, you know, air quotes yeah. on the IndyCar mm-hmm. schedule. They're, they're going to do the doubleheader in Iowa next year again, but um, yeah, I, I just, it sucks because they had something so cool and so unique was that doubleheader. And now I don't know what's if we're not going to see one um, if things stay the same. So it just kind of yeah. sucks in that respect, unless they're unless they add a 37th race, which I uh, highly doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, teams would be a big fan of that. Yeah. But next gen is more affordable. So just run an extra race. <laughs> Pay the same money, same amount of money that you've been paying. <laughs> you know, go out yeah. to L.A. or tear up cars at. At Atlanta now, just like you would at Talladega. But we're saving <laughs> you money on the car. Um, was, but yeah, I, I want to see more shakeups too. I want to see shakeups in the order that we go to these tracks. Mm. Um, I want to see them shake up the playoffs again. I think they should do it every couple of years. Uh, oh my god, I am desperately, desperately, desperately hoping for Green Sonoma. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was just about to say it. Why is Sonoma not part of the the West Coast Swing? It makes no sense. Because it is unbearably hot in the summer to go to that race. Like, it is genuinely miserable to go to that race in June. And it's not even on my birthday weekend anymore, so there's literally no reason for me to go. (laughs) And it's the only West Coast race of the second half for the season outside Phoenix. Why is it not in the first third of the season? What about Las Vegas? Oh, that's right. I forgot we go to Las Vegas. But still, it's not even close to Sonoma's race. That's true. There's no Um, reason for Sonoma to not be part of the West Coast swing. So and it's so pretty when it's green. Yeah, and would, it'll look pretty. That would help too with uh, what we ran like three or four road courses. It felt like we were running a road course every other week over the summer. Yeah, so that would help kind of distribute them. And again, it goes back to that argument of I want unique racetracks on my schedule. Makes it a yeah. little more unique. Maybe you slide Gateway into where you had Sonoma, move Sonoma up. Ooh, that is a yeah. spicy idea, and I like it a lot. I mean, that's the only reason they didn't go to Sonoma last year is because it wasn't part of the West Coast swing. That is a spicy, they were like, we're not going to send them back out there for one race. That is a spicy, spicy idea, Joan. I yeah. like it. Yep. 
I mean, there's things you can do with the schedule, right? I, I don't know if maybe you want to go Daytona, then Sonoma, but if you say go Daytona, Phoenix. Put it at the uh, end of the West Coast swing. Because you Sonoma, start at the yeah. south, and then you go up, and then end at Sonoma, and then you head back east. Yep. Something like that. Just yeah. don't... Uh, oh, I don't want road courses every other week again, because... Having Watkins Glen, and then the only reason I was okay with Indy after is because I went. But I, I don't like seeing the same like road course every week or short track, short track, short track. Or so you yeah. know, it's really similar to how we felt. You know, watching at when SRX was a thing and started is like they did their ass, they did their asphalt oval, and then they did two dirt ovals in a row, and it was like, eh, yeah. can we go back? To, eh, you know, not great. It's like the same kind of deal. It's like I, I totally understand that the road course thing was uh, getting old. At yeah. that point, you got unique racetracks. You also have to have unique types of racetracks spread out mm-hmm. on the schedule. Um, the next gen is definitely very unique. Testing began today. First uh, pack testing at Daytona. I forget how many teams are down there. Um, there's been liveries unveiled. Uh, some teams have the numbers in the new position, some teams have numbers in the old position still. <laughs> Um, some teams have it somewhere in between looking at you, JTG. Um, first off, how, how we feeling better about the number placement now after seeing it on actual race cars. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I still prefer the old layout. Oh, yeah. I had... I'm also think, a boring traditionalist, though. So. I think if I think if we used the new number placement to its max potential, it'll look it'll literally look like just fine. But, I mean, overall, do I care? Not entirely. The car race is good. It yeah. is what it is. Like, if it, I, like, I have no, con- like, there's, there's no conceivable way I'm going to have any control over something that is apparently a, a big money move. So why I'm, I'm not going to sit here and get bothered about it. Um, it can be done. It can be done well, and that's all I care about. If it can look good, that that's cool with me. Honestly, I see it going the way of roof sponsors when they first introduced it with the gen six and you kind of don't see them anymore because most teams just kind of got sick of designing around them like there's very few teams that still put sponsors on the roof think about it Stuart haas doesn't penske doesn't hendrick doesn't penske never did hendrick does i don't think they do yeah they do do they still Mm -hmm. i gotta look this up now um but i mean it's a bit does i think Stuart haas does too yeah, man. Oh, they do. How about that? Um, oh, uh, that was wrong. Though. But I mean, you've seen a lot of teams <laughs> phase that out, and it's like, man, you kind of got used to it. I don't know. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, uh. Um, heavens, you know, whatever. If, if it goes away, it goes away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as it races fine, like who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I, I prefer him in the old position, but like whatever. That's not. It'd be what it'd point. be. It'd be yeah. what it be. Um, I'm excited to hear over the next couple of days some of like the the media transcripts and whatnot from the drivers. Hopefully, this car is uh, decent in the draft since that's what we want to do with all our mile and a halfs, anyways. Um, I still worry about that freaking diffuser on the car and it falling off. But yeah, what are you gonna do? We'll see. Yeah. Well, can't we'll wait. Bridge when we get there, so <laughs> can't yep. wait for one of those to just go flying through the air. <laughs> can't um, wait to can't wait to fillet a human person with a diffuser. <laughs> God, <laughs> here I go again. Um, oh man! IndyCar returns this weekend with the Grand Prix of Portland, Portland Grand Prix, Grand Prix of Portland. PNW. Um, I was there. Pato Award goes into this race with a 10-point lead over Alex Pillow, 22 points over Newgarden. Scott Dixon's still lurking. Um, God, can Scott Dixon just go away? (laughs) For like one one season, can I just not have this guy in the championship hunt? Scott Dixon existing in IndyCar is, like, it really makes me sympathize with people who weren't Jimmy Johnson fans in the late 2000s. (laughs) The thing with Scott Dixon is he's not even, like, exciting to watch. (laughs) <laughs> like he he's just he's just not going to screw up. He knows exactly where the limit of the car is and he's going to run it right at that at every time. He That's never a makes a mistake. Driver. He's he's, uh, he's, so, he's so fantastic, good. but so he's phenomenal. Boring. No, he is like 100%. He's, he's <laughs> phenomenal, but God, he's boring. Um, You oh, cannot count Scott Dixon out. I yeah. don't care. 
I'm so mad that I can't. Until he's mathematically eliminated from contention, uh, I just can't do it. It's going to be a good race. It's going to be exciting. Too bad there's football starting this weekend. That's a shame. I'm not going to watch it. So if you're like me and you're cool and you like racing instead of balls, uh, dude, you're cool. You, that's the only racing you got to watch on Sunday, but too. But what if you like both, Davey? The, me, no care. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was announced in the last week or so that Romain Grosjean is going to take over the 28th for Andretti Autosport. So, uh, not Big surprising cool move there. That sucks for Ryan Hunter Ray Jr. Is he a junior? Today? No. I don't know why I threw that He's in there. He's not a junior. Yeah. Were you thinking Ryan Truex Jr.? I don't know. I'm tired, man. It's been, <laughs> it's been a long week. We are um, all tired. I'm sorry that the energy yeah. has been so down. We've had yeah. some good discussions, though. We've done all right. Deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Energy. Um, energy. Energy. Gonna Joe, energy. Of, gonna drink more of this Give me with some energy, Joe. He gave a thumbs up for everyone who's on the audio podcast, yeah. everyone, the listeners. He gave a um, thumbs up. So anyway, Grosjean Greg. to Ganassi, or not Ganassi, Andretti's cool. God, yeah, you messed it up. I'm okay um, with it. RHR, Captain America's on the outside now, looking in. Uh, Hinch is I probably as well. I think it was what? announced earlier that, that Hunter Ray was leaving. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe if he did good in that car. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, but you know, way. all of Andretti hasn't been too great. So this yeah. is a very good point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Poor Rossi. Outside of Colton Herta, like randomly showing up to these races. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably um, should have won Nashville, but yeah. Predictions: IndyCar. Oh yeah, Grand Prix of Portland. I'm gonna take New Garden. So you, you mother. Mm. Grand yeah, you're gonna take New Garden. Yep. You know what? Since we've been taught every time we uh we talk smack about a driver and then they proceed to do really well, give me Alexander Rossi. I'm ready to be heard again. Oh, come on. Just take Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Xfinity and Cup Series have a double header this weekend at Richmond on Sunday or Saturday. Um, in remembrance of that fateful day 20 years ago. Um, I don't know what I did there, but, uh, Dale Jr. is going to make his, uh, lone start of the year in the Xfinity Series race. Um, really, the, the big story has to be Austin Sindrick and AJ Altmendinger now coming down to the end of the regular season battling to see who will be regular season champion it's a, it's a, it's either just outside it's just like 11 or 12 points or it's less than that uh between those two to see to determine that so predictions give me the uh, junior god you can take Dale junior too you can take Dale junior too it's okay you don't take my favorite driver in this one race of the season um, yeah, i'm taking junior as well um you guys I, suck i messed up my camera doing that too um, oh, i wonder why my desk has a giant crack and a dent in it oh it's because i always punch the same spot for comedic effect hey Joe, um, you know who you should pick <laughs> that's an all guy oh my god you're right so other thing i wanted to say sam mayer's driving a bj mcleod car because junior loves bj mcleod which i think is pretty cool and we saw that in the broadcast because we got like a full two minutes of BJ McLeod spotlight. So big, big BJ way, McLeod fan here. That starting lineup graphic. That's yes, it's cool. so good. It's pretty good. You should do that every week. <laughs> they, they did the throwback race better than the broadcast team that was doing the throwback race. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got him. Oh, poor Mike Joy. Um, Cup Series. <laughs> A lot of playoff drivers struggling this past week. Alex Bowman obviously won this race in the spring after, you know, late race heroics and just being faster on the short runs than everyone else. Mm. Um, but with mm. a lot of playoff drivers struggling, this is separate from our predictions. Who is your biggest candidate? Or who's your candidate to bounce back this week? Honestly, Bowman, because he was running P5 when he blew a tire. So. Like. And I mean, they they the fact that they recovered to not even to basically be tied for the 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 last spot. I'm like, they're going to be fine mm -hmm. unless they die again this week. So in which case, I'm going to start panicking. 
So yeah, I still to, like one of his good tracks, isn't yeah. it? I gotta agree. I think Bowman too. I'm looking at the list of drivers, and I'm I'm you know Ryan Blaney. I don't think is gonna rebound all that well. I was thinking Ryan Blaney, but I don't think so. That's who I'm taking. I Go guess. Down. I mean, Byron's probably going to rebound too. Why? Well. Why? Why, Joe? Why? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. He, he had the best car at New Hampshire. New best car at New Hampshire. So, uh, him. Yeah, that's weird. He wasn't leading at the end of New Hampshire, though. Oof. <laughs> hey, y'all are the ones ragging <laughs> on Eric so. Um. I didn't I'm rack in winning a race. I'm just mad that he made the playoffs. Eric Almarola is the Eric in the Cup Series with the most wins. Yeah, I'm, sorry, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He finally won on a real racetrack this year. Too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm joking. I like Eric Jones a lot. on that one. I Who, like Eric Jones uh, a lot. Davey. Who am I going to take? Or Matthew. Who picked? You pick first, Matthew. Oh, dude, I don't know who to pick. Um, mm-hmm. I really don't want to pick Hamlin because I don't like Denny Hamlin. I'm going to pick Joey Logano. Gross. Yeah, I don't like it either, but <laughs> Hamlin would be a good pick. Uh, he led the most laps in the spring here. That was a daytime race, though. This is a nighttime race. Won't be able to actually watch it because I'll be at the football game, but. Wow. I'll watch it on Sunday morning. Now we have to carry the race discussion. Tisk tisk. You know what? I don't care. Give me Larson. Judge me all you want. Don't That's care. okay. I took him last week. Yeah. <laughs> don't care. Don't care. I definitely don't care. Still don't care. Is it me now? Me? Yeah. yeah. Davey yeah, Hazard. You're the only other person on this podcast, Davey. The Davey Hazard pick. The Davey <laughs> Hazard coefficient. Yeah. Welcome to the Davey Hazard effect. Um, today we. The fun, not to not right now. I uh, I'm gonna pick Tyler Reddick. Ew. You know what? That's a pretty good pick because Austin Dillon was really good there last year. So I think Tyler Reddick's got the. I think Tyler Reddick's got the stuff. He's got the moxie. This is a track where Tyler Reddick can't be Tyler Reddick. Don't care. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't care. Don't care. Still, but, still don't. Oh, Darlington. Uh, you know where? You know. Yeah. You know. Uh, shut up. I want to give a uh, shout out to Ryan Priest and Corey LaJoy for running in the top 10 all night. Dude, uh, Sunday night. I completely forgot about that. Corey LaJoy ran so good on Sunday. Well, he was supposed to drive at Hendrick this year, guys. So, of course, he did good. What? I don't know what that means. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say anything. What? <laughs> this show's weird. Today's episode is weird. Why is it so weird? No, you know. can't say I didn't say anything. It's literally on. It's 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 literally it's literally like yeah we know un- that Junior wanted him in the car like it, or in it's, the eight it's, car it's it's literally it's 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 literally on I mean I didn't hear anything did the listeners at home hear anything he cut it out he cut it out that bastard he cut it out he cut it out Hated don't you. listen to him Joe's a liar yeah don't worry I'll just not a liar it. Joe's a liar don't listen not a liar. He's lying. Not a liar. Don't let him do this to us. But this will conclude this week's episode of the Fake Racers <laughs> Podcast. As always, please hit that like button and subscribe here on. JTN. We're being censored. We can't thank you enough for tuning this, in, and we'll see you guys. Literally, nineteen eighty four. Help. Fake Racers Podcast. Help. No, but seriously, um, if you want to help support us even more, you head on over to the JTN merch store, buy some Fake Racers Podcast merch. You can also buy T-shirts for these two fools. Um, as well as a bunch of other sim racing Can you buy drivers. a Corey LaJoy Hendrick shirt too while you're at it? <laughs> I, why would they be able to buy that? Why would they what about a Ryan? What about a Ryan Priest Hendrick shirt? Can yeah. I make that happen? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, I'm not going to let these two self promote. So, <laughs> th- can't thank you guys enough for listening, for watching, wherever, whatever you may be doing to help support us. And we'll see you guys next week on the Fake Racers Podcast. Bye. Bye.